talking about transitioning this is the video you want to watch stay tuned hey guys so the big thing that everyone's talking about now is going natural and um, if you're a relaxed lady and you want to go natural or thinking about going natural you have two choices you can either chop your hair off which is one extreme or you can transition which is a more calm approach that's what that that's basically what transitioning is you're transitioning from one texture to the next in my case I'm transitioning from relaxed to natural it means that I'm going back to the way my hair naturally was when I was a child before it was processed uh, before it was just touched basically I've been relaxing for um, since I was 13 been relaxing for 13 years wow I just did the math it's crazy so I really don't know what my natural hair looks like the only thing I have memories of is you know when my mom was combing my hair out and I would cry and then she would put the pressing comb in it on Saturdays and because my texture is a little tougher than others people like to say that I'm mixed with African and um, Negro um, being politically correct, <laughs> my texture, it's, it's more coarse. Um, my hair is a lot more thicker than, you know, the average person and it's more kinky and it's not very curly. So, um, I don't have fond memories of my natural hair. I have memories of me wanting to just have straight hair and I wanted it to blow in the wind and... Don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved my relaxed hair every step of the way. My issue was, and loved the process. Now I was relaxing for 13 years and my scalp never got used to the relaxer. You know, some people would sit there and it would burn, but mine was a different type of burn. It felt like acid every time I relaxed my hair. So as I got older, I started to relax it less frequently. So I would relax it maybe twice a year, sometimes once a year three times the most and just because the process of getting it relaxed was so tedious nobody wanted to do it no hairdresser I will always have to find someone that I trust and to let them do it because um, it would be too much it would take too much like it would be a complaint every time it would take too much product it would take too much time it doesn't dry fast enough like it would be complaint after complaint um, but as I got older um, and I started researching. Lately, I found my family um, has a history of fibroids. And recently, they have been linking relaxers to uh, women of color with fibroids um, because of the chemicals in the relaxer. My last relaxer that I had in April, um, this is, it's now November. My last relaxer was really bad. I think I got a, honestly, I think I got a bad batch because I've been using that relaxer for years and it, it has never burned the way that one burned. The person that was actually doing my hair had gloves on and it burned her hands as well. Her hands were like, she could feel it coming through the gloves. So we immediately washed it out. It was like really dry and yeah, in her scalp. And when she had stopped relaxing and gone natural, um, it really like just got better. I was having the same issues like I would have and I have pictures of it. I'm going to insert it in the video. It would be so bad. I can literally like scrape it out of my scalp, pull it out of my hair and it would be like some big flakes. I don't know if you guys know what cradle cap is but in the West Indies it's like when the baby's young and you kind of scrape the stuff off there. That's what it looked like in my hair. But I would have so much, like in this region, oh my gosh, I would have so much of it and I would pull it out and it would, it would take out a lot of my hair. Like, I was having a lot of issues. Um, I was having severe dry scalp. Like, I would, lo I would lotion my scalp today and tomorrow it's dry. Like, you know, I was having issue after issue after issue and then both of my sisters are natural and, and they're like, well, you should try it because they were having the same issues um, with dandruff and the excessive dry scalp and they were like well since they're natural but anyone that knows me knows that I've always said Nat N I can never go natural I me no no but I woke up and I was like 
I want to go natural. And I really, I psyched myself up because I really thought that I was going to renege on my decision. And nobody believed me. Like, my mom was like, yeah, right, whatever. And I kept going and I kept going and I kept going. And so now it's April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. I've been natural seven months. Um, and I really just want to cut my hair off because I'm so excited to, like, to see my new texture. But I'm trying to wait it out to, you know... To have it grow to, uh, and then it's winter. You know, you don't want to have your hair out in the winter time. So, I'm kind of weighing it. I don't know what what I'll do it, but every few weeks I'll chop a little bit of it off, and um, just you know because it gets really stringy and transitioning. So let's talk about the problems of transitioning. I gave you a little background. Um, I almost forgot what the video was about. I problems of transitioning are. Your, the ends get really stringy. It, you can trim it. You're going to trim it today and give it about two weeks. It's going to look like you didn't have a trim. It's going to get really stringy. It's going to look like, you know, when you put the flat iron on your hair and you kind of burn it, how it, like some of it curled, like it has that weird, like damaged look to the end. That's fine. And um, one of the things also that I learned is that your, your hair is at a crossroad. And it is your natural. The reason why you don't see a curl pattern, which is one of the things that I'm just like, ah, I can't find my curl pattern. I don't know what it looks like. Your hair is trying to send all the nutrients you're putting into it to the ends of your hair because it's so damaged that it's not really concentrating on the roots of it. So if you wanted to, if you like really just wanted to see it, I would say cut it off. Um, if you can wait and hold it out, I'll say you know like let it grow out a little bit more. Because um, another issue with transitioning is you don't feel pretty. A lot of the times you get dressed and it's like, Ugh, what am I going to do with my hair? Because it's so, it's just like that awkward phase in your life where you're just, you just don't feel pretty. You don't, you know, you're not used to this texture. You're not used to looking this way. Um, so one of the things I do I make sure that all my styles last at least two to three days. So I don't have, like, I'm not dealing with that every day. Um, also, I wouldn't, like, braiding, it's up to you because you you have to think about your edges. You know, you have to think about the tension you're putting on your hair. You can also do, like, um, crochet. That's a good option. But definitely. Um, and whenever I take it out, I'll wash it and then start all over again. So that's been working for me, but it's really, it's been, it's been a journey. It's been, um, not the easiest road sometimes, you know, like I'll have a meltdown and I'll be like, oh my God, I just want to relax my hair again. But, um, I definitely, for me, don't want to relax my daughter's hair. And I, I saw this video, I don't know if anybody else saw it. It's where the lady was trying, her daughter was being bullied at school because of her hair texture. And she was trying to tell her daughter, you know, you're beautiful the way you are, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, but, well, I want hair like you, mommy. And the mommy had straight hair. And so here the mommy is trying to tell her that she's so beautiful the way she looks and the way her natural hair is. But she wasn't leading by example. And I definitely want to, you know, I want my kids to, if God blesses me with girls, I want them to be able to see um, how beautiful natural hair can be. And I definitely want to start embracing you know my culture and what God has given me and not just try to um akin to facade now I'm not saying that I'm not gonna have straight hair <sighs> yeah I know I'm gonna put my as soon as I get my closure game up I'm gonna be because I'm like self-conscious about closures and I think it's gonna make me look old but as soon as I figure that out I'm gonna have my closures and my long hair going but I mean for my hair I definitely want to embrace who I am. Another issue with transitioning is the comments of others. Now, when you decide you want to go natural, I would advise that you make up that decision in your mind first. And when you're good and solid about your decision, then tell others. Because it's not always going to be good feedback and then it's like... You know, the follow-up may not always be good. So if you're secure in what you want to do, that always helps one thing that makes it easier i would definitely say is washing co-washing it really like softens the natural hair and you know softens the end and it just makes life so much easier 
it's not even funny but so I know this video was supposed to be about transitioning and the problems in transitioning but I really just wanted to give a background on my story um, and where I was coming from so you guys could understand why I was transitioning and I definitely wanted to talk about the problems and the insecurities that you feel while transitioning and I really hope that you guys enjoy the video thumbs up and like if you have any comments you can definitely leave them below and I'll be sure to get back to you you can hit me up on Instagram billionaire Mandy Twitter billionaire AV and Facebook you can like my fan page I love you guys and I'll see you guys in another video bye